Ah, so it is good day to you, huh? Oh, so very good to see your light, your brightness, your divine presence, dearest beings of light that you are. So we are here in unusual times, eh? An unusual time, an unusual energy, unusual setting, unusual place, unusual. How much more unique can we all get? Oh, we don't need to find out. <laughs> because if we were to find out, you never know what might happen. As you understand, we've been telling you for some time that there is no paradigm for where you are right now. You are in new learning experience. You are laying down the groundwork for a new dimensional shift. And this new dimensional shift is indeed accompanying you in the new light. So take a deep breath. Know and understand that as you accommodate this uniqueness, that the stress or anxiety level of the planet has indeed raised. No, it would be nice if the planet could raise its dimensional frequency without that stress or anxiety level, but so far that has not been the case. That is why sometimes you have a, a disaster or a, a challenge somewhere and people go to that space and send love and light, which raises the dimensional frequency. This is global wide. And at this moment in time, it is very possible that there are millions across the planet that are meditating at that point in time, that there are energies across the planet that are accommodating that energy. And as that energy is taken care of, the frequency of this planet then raises. Take another deep breath. What does it feel like? to live in the frequency of a new dimensional realm. This is the first time ever in the history of this planet that all of the peoples of this planet are indeed focusing on one aspect, are acknowledging one connective force. There is power there. So, how does that feel? Ah, that is what is raising your anxiety level because you're thinking about, oh, all of the trauma and all of the drama and all of the pain. And yes, we honor the people who have volunteered to leave this planet at this time. We are honoring the people who are volunteering to stay here and indeed stay safe. So to counteract that level of stress or anxiety, to counteract that disconnection, we remind you once again, as we did many months ago, actually, as we did originally 21 years ago, and reminded you many months ago, that at 11, 11 a.m. is the time of an instant snapshot of your thoughts. And we ask you to instead of just thinking of what you're thinking then, to take that instant snapshot and place your hands in the prayer position at your forehead. That is the highest honor that you can give anyone. And at 11, 11 a.m., breathe into the love of this planet. Breathe into the connection of this planet. Breathe into the heart and soul of the people of this planet and the planet itself. And then move your hands to your face in a prayer position. And breathe into the communication 
breathe into the help and strength to all of the people who are working, all of the people who are helping those who are ill, all of the people who are in service, possibly even putting themselves at risk. And acknowledging that frequency of love and support with those individuals. And then you place your hands at your heart in the prayer position. And as you do, allow your heart to expand so strongly in love that any illness, any virus, any energy that is contrary to the divine order of light and goodness on this planet, be disintegrated once and for all, disengaged from your system. And then as you place your hands across your heart, you simply give thanks for yourself, your family, your friends, that is what we have asked you to do each day. That will release some of the stress and anxiety on this planet. That is what we are focusing on right here, right now. We have more messages throughout the weekend of expanded love and tools that you can experience to raise your vibration and assist in living at that higher frequency. For you see, you are the light plurkers. Play plus work equals plerk. You are the light plerkers of this planet. You are the ones we are waiting for. You are the connected ones. You are holding the frequency. And all people on this planet are focused on a particular frequency. So please, dearest beings of light, we ask you, we implore you to hold the light. Try your best not to get caught up in all of the drama and trauma and all of the hoopla. Because as you know, from chaos comes change. This planet is indeed changing. This planet is indeed shifting its vibrational frequency, its dimensional frequency right here, right now. And with your help, it will shift with as much ease and grace as is possible into the intuition age. And that intuition age is centered in the heart, in set, is centered in love. Ah, oh, dearest beings of light, we are indeed so grateful for you. We know you have volunteered to be here at this point in time. So when you hear others being anxious, stress-filled, or in fear of what is going to happen, or what could happen, or what might be. What if this happens, and what if that happens? What if doesn't exist yet? So you, dearest beings of light, get to be the light in the darkness. You get to be the one forging forward with the torch, teaching others to follow in that state of love to light the fire of love that is within you, that fire of passion that is within you. We thank you for your service. We love you deeply. We see you. We know you. And we bid you namaste. Namaste. Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon a Magnetic Service. 
We are not oblivious to the elephant under the table, dear ones. The channeling is being given in an auspicious time. A time where many are in fear and others are struggling to stay out of it. Before we, we go into something that I want you to hear, I want you to just take a moment. There are those right now who are saying goodbye to their elders. And it's difficult. Never thought it would be this way, and it's difficult. Adaronda has given so wisely some of the, the, the principles of esoterics and the reasoning. But it doesn't help when you've lost someone. Let's take a moment, compassionate action. To be the light worker of the age. And to have the empathy enough to share the peace and the compassion that you would have of the light of the world you are with those who need it. Just for a moment. Just for a moment. There are those who say, how long is this going to last? And the answer is long, long enough. Long enough. I want to tell you some things and they become metaphors and some of you will understand, some of you will not. Let's talk about children for a moment. When children are growing up and, and they reach a certain age, every balanced good parent knows how to work a puzzle. The child becomes afraid. And they're afraid of just about everything because they haven't seen it or, or perhaps it jars them or they just need help. And sometimes the, the biggest fear is of the dark. And they'll say, Dad, Mom, I'm afraid of the dark. I don't know what's there. Help me with this because there could be monsters lurking there. I don't know. And every good parent knows how to handle it. They will say, listen, hon. Listen, dear. I'm going to turn on a light here for a moment. I want you to see there's nothing there. When we turn the light off again, I want you to see there's still nothing there. But if you're afraid, even for a moment, I'm here. I'm holding your hand. Just hug me. Just hug me. Don't be afraid of what's not there, they say to the child. And eventually, through time, the child evolves and grows up and it balances itself. And it knows what the parent knows. And it's able then to help the children that come from them. It's classic, absolutely classic for humanity to understand that children go through times of fear when they don't understand things. And that that is so easily correctable with compassion and love, explanation and light. And every good parent here has gone through this and perhaps you've had it with your parents as well. I'll tell you something. I'll give you two scenarios that go against this that happen. Perhaps it's inappropriate, but they happen. I want you to imagine that child for a moment in that state of fear. Trying to make sense of things in the dark, imagining things perhaps that might attack them. Scenario one, what if instead of a hug, the child saw the parent was afraid too? When that happens, it's over for the child. They check out because it's just too much. They're afraid of the dark and so are their parents. It scars the child for life. They won't forget this moment because there's no hug. There's no explanation. There's no light. There's only fear. And their parents are shaking as well. It happens. It has happened. It happens in wartime when the parent can't do anything about it. Scenario two is even worse. It is inappropriate parental control. 
where the child is afraid of the dark and the parent says, well, you should be. Because there's evil things there. So you've got to do this and that and this and that. And the child grows up with rules about evil. And understands that there's no hug for the dark at all. There's just rules. Everything I'm telling you is a metaphor. Some of you are getting it. Some of you are not. Every human being listening here, every one of you, has an inner child. Some of those inner child right now are scared to death. Some are not. I know who's listening to this later. I know who's listening to this and watching it now. There's a lot of very mature old souls who know exactly where this is going. And you'll say, well, I, this message is not for me because I've, I've gone beyond it. Have you? Have you really? How far does it have to go before that breaks and you start to fear? I'll tell you right now, lightworker, old soul, you've got equipment inside to soothe that savage beast called fear. It's what Adirondas said also. It's what we're all saying also. If you didn't understand it, you didn't know it. One of the things that's going to radically change when this is all over is the responsibility of those who inform you. When the dust clears, you're going to look at this closely and say, all the media made it worse. Made it worse. Because there's never really been anything like this. They are marketing-based media. They are not information-based, dear ones, and you know this. They compete for your viewership and the, and the more dramatic things they can show you the more you're attracted many of you the world perhaps not light workers the world is attracted to drama so after they've given you information that is correct and accurate then they will go to panels that will discuss and discuss and discuss and discuss did you know it's possible for you to turn on the media when you wake up and turn it off when you go to bed and hear the same thing over and over 30 or 40 times. How does it make you feel? How does it your inner child feel when all you're seeing is that the adults are afraid too? Hmm? The media is not aware of something because of the programming. They're not aware of it. Not yet. In between all of this marketing information, they're playing, they're playing advertisements which are inappropriate. The advertisements have been scheduled way in advance, but isn't it interesting what they're about? Usually about medicine you need because you're old. Or medicine you need because you're young. Or medicine you need just because you stand there as a human being. In other words, you're never normal. You always need something. Need something to, to medicate you. Or perhaps you need an attorney to help you during this time. <laughs> I don't think that those media outlets are really putting together the chain that is scaring the planet to death. That will change. There is room for the good news channels, finally. And they will arise and they will promise you information that's not ad nauseum. They will promise you information and then go to things which are balanced and uplifting so that you can see that which is and is not happening. There is so much good news that none of you know about. None of you. Because that's not in the scope of what they do. You might say one of the things that this time is going to do to change the information givers because when it is over and it will be and the dust will settle you're going to look at them and go bad job you didn't do it well you didn't do it right you gave us entertainment and drama you didn't give us anything that helped our hearts you didn't, you didn't help us you didn't hold our hands you didn't hug us enough you didn't do any of that and you'll say who's responsible for this media that's one thing 
that you're going to see change, dear ones. That's a reboot. So the earth, the earth will probably take a while, but you're going to start seeing things differently and perhaps more truthfully. You may find out some wonderful things that would never be broadcast unless it weren't for this. I want to tell you something. I want to tell you about an experiment that was done with children many years ago. It's an experiment that probably would not be allowed in today's rules. <laughs> some psychologists know of this. Some nutritionists have studied it. It's about children put together for an experiment about food. And the children are given a buffet three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, where they can select anything on the buffet as much as they want of it without anyone saying anything. <laughs> no parents allowed. And that buffet is beautiful. It starts with the vegetables and it goes to the, to the rices, the, some of the carbs, the, the fruit. It's a standard, wonderful, healthy buffet. And of course, at the end of that buffet, there's the desserts. Only these, well, these are more for kids. There's the Mars bar. <laughs> there's the M&Ms. Oh, there's the cookie, the cake, and the pie. It's all there. It's all there. You turn the children loose at breakfast. What are you going to have? What do you think? The children all run to the end and stuff themselves with the cookies and the cake. And they did. Lunchtime, they did the same thing. I mean, why? How, how could a vegetable, a turnip, compare with a Mars bar? Dinner, they did the same. The next day, they were all sick. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Now a child doesn't know that. But the innate of the child does. And so over a period of meals, what happened in this experiment is the children started eating the vegetables, the rice, the fruit, all the things and then the desserts in moderation, but enjoyable and loving it last. Because the body demanded the balance. Not the junk, but the balance. It was interesting because the experiment showed that even children who desire sweets and don't know any better have an innate which starts to balance when given the right things. I want you to analyze what's going on right now on this planet because I'm going to make a statement. You're not being given the right things. Dear ones, right now on this planet there are no veggies and there's no fruit. I think you understand what I'm saying. That is going to change. I think the wild card in all of this will be those who are going to step up and start to change it. And say, look, we've got some good news here. You haven't heard this before. But there's hope. I want to show you the bias. I want to show you the bias if you haven't seen it before. So you really understand how this works. If you look at the information channels, they'll give you all the charts of the infected and the deaths. And the infected and the deaths. And the infected and the deaths. I want to ask you, where is the recovered column? It's not there, is it? That's a bias. Do you see the bias that is there? That is a drama bias. They're not even thinking. Well, you know, 90%, 99%, well, they recovered. Where is that? Where are those numbers? And they're not there. And then there's all the economic doom and gloom that they're telling you. Not since the depression, they say. Have we seen this and the potentials of it? And everybody is then comparing it to the horrors of 1929. And nowhere are they saying, yes, but remember, <laughs> it's temporary. It may take a couple of years to return, but it will return. It will return. And the stock market will return. It's poised and ready. 
This is not the end of the airlines or the steel industry or the automobile industry. It's not. This is a bump. Are they saying that to you? Or are they starting to compare it to the worst of the worst? And you tune in. And there's no vegetables. There's no fruit. There's just junk. I want to tell you something that's profound. But later today, I want, to, I want to give you a channel that's called Parenting the Inner Child. <laughs> but right now, I want to tell you something. This is how profound this is. Historians, generations from now, will look at some numbers which are very telling. Humanity in general has increased lifespan attributes. There was a time, even in this country, when when you lived to 45, that was your life. Honest. 50. That was it. You weren't really expected to live that long. There was too much disease, and bad nutrition. And all of these things have evolved. So now you're looking at a slow increase of, of lifespan because of nutrition and, and knowledge and all. So you're well into the late 80s and approaching the 90s. Average lifespan of a human being in this country, in the country below you. I'm speaking of Canada and the USA. What if I told you they're going to find out something. Generations from now, they're going to look at the charts and say, what is this dip here? What is this dip here? They're going to name it. They're going to name it the corona dip. The dip is in the chart where they see an entire generation. It had nothing to do with the virus. That fear shortened their lives. Fear shortened their lives. That's how profound this is. Don't let this, don't let this happen. Don't let this happen. Because I'll tell you something. Historians may say, eventually, when they do all the countings, that fear killed more people than the virus. Are you going to be one of them? Or are you going to stand tall and say, this is a hump. We'll get over it. It's temporary. We'll mourn when we have to mourn. But we're coming back. Let's have a recovered column somewhere on the news, someplace on some chart, to show you a truth that maybe they're not really willing to show you because it's just a little too good news. Hmm? That's what I wanted to tell you. The truth is not really being shown. As bad as you might say this is, it's a hump, but the real truth is not really there. And the good news is not really there. Not yet. And there's going to be a reckoning for that. You'll see. I am crying in love with humanity. Two steps forward, one step back. You're in the step back. Old souls, you were built for this. I'll talk about that more. You were built for this. This is where you shine. This is what you're for. This is the compassion factor you have. Others don't. That's your experience time is now to go to work and so it is